Welcome back. My name is Lynn Gillette. I'm the president of the Silicon Valley chapter of AAII, and I have the pleasure of uh, introducing our next speaker, uh, Brian Schwadke. He is a realtor and transition specialist. What that means is that he focuses on uh, uh, retired people and people that are, are you know, downsizing and all that, uh, as well as doing just all the general things that realtors do. Uh, his topic is 2023 real estate market update. We'll be covering that in some detail. And I'll just read some, some of his uh, bio. Brian has been a realtor and transition specialist since 2004. He helps homeowner, home owners of all ages and is also a senior real estate specialist. That's a, a certification, uh, as well as certified senior advisor. That's a CSA. During his career in real estate, uh, Brian has consistently been in the top 5% of all agents in the nation and top 5% worldwide. He is also a creator of the Stay or Go Homeowner System, which helps hundreds of homeowners decide if they should stay in their homes or make a transition to a new home. He offers live seminars and has a very useful website. I've visited it often with uh, vi uh, videos with, which are instructional. Uh, he offers personal, he works as a personal consultant in the area of real estate, financial planning, estate planning, tax downsizing, and more. His goal is to give his clients clarity, certainty, and uh, confidence so they can save money, time, and frustration. And I'll just make a per, uh, another comment. Uh, the first time I heard about Brian was from Jack Maxfield, who was the founder of the Silicon Valley chapter of AAII. And... Uh, he, uh, he downsized from a Saratoga home and, and did all that and told me that Brian had been extremely helpful and did a very professional job in helping him in that area. So I'll pass along that, that little recommendation. He'll be covering areas of all kinds of areas in two, uh, what happened in 2022 and 23. So Brian, I'm gonna turn the time over to you. This is gonna be recording and the recordings will be available in about a week. So you have the microphone. All right, thanks, Lynn. Thanks everybody for being here, for being a technologically advanced people using Zoom and whatnot. So um, <clears throat> I'm gonna talk today about uh, 2022 and 2023 real estate market. Uh, if you wanna check up on me, who is this Brian guy with the blue shirt and the crazy hair, you can go on uh, Google Maps or Google in general, type in Brian Schwatka. It's a, uh, I thought it was a German name, but I found out it was Polish. Uh, and so I didn't want those jokes, you know, how many Polish realtors does it take to sell a house? So I usually say German, but it's Brian Schwatka, comma, realtor. And if you do do that, you'll see some uh, videos I've shot, some webinars I've done, some classes I've given, some homes I've sold, some testimonials. I've been at it for quite a long time, uh, since 2004. Uh, so coming up on 18 years, my sole purpose in life in uh, my job is to help homeowners make the best decisions for their future, whether they're staying and whether or whether they're going. A lot of people say, well, I, don't you want to put a sign in my lawn? Don't you want me to go? No, I want you to make good decisions. And then we'll decide if you should stay or if you should go. So uh, what's happened over the last 18 years of working with seniors, they get this paralysis of analysis. You know, should I stay uh, within home care in my home age in place or should I make a transition to a new home? So I uh, at that time I created, you know, what's called the stay or go homeowner system. So it's stay or go homeowner dot com. First, I help homeowners decide if they should stay or if they should go. Once we know that, then we need to know where we're going. Is that gonna be a new home that better suits their lifestyle, aging in place? Is that going to be relocating out of the area, maybe following the kids, um, you know, uh, or going to less expensive areas? Once we know if we're going, where we're going, then we create a plan, it's called a flight plan, and we uh, try and reduce the homeowner's stress, this is a big deal, making a move after 30, 40, 50 years of being in your home. And first and foremost, I am a realtor. A lot of people say, oh, I thought you were just a, a consultant. I didn't think you were a realtor. <laughs> well, this is what I do for my clients, but usually I'm meeting them a couple years in advance before they even, even need to you know, make these tough decisions. So I'm helping them. I share all this information at community centers, at the retirement communities themselves, to the people that are on the waiting list, getting ready to uh, make a move. 
and I've created a bunch of videos. It's all uh, on the website, stayorgohomeowner.com, and that is just an educational website. It's not selling anybody anything. First, it just asks you, which homeowner are you? You know, I might want to go, or where would I go? And I'm ready to go. And this is all taught in those three modules, depending on who you are, right? So that's me in a nutshell. Today, what I'm going to do is talk to you mainly about what happened in 2022, right? Because it's it was just December 31st. We don't have any information on 2023 yet. So we'll talk about national numbers and we'll also talk about Silicon Valley or Santa Clara County numbers because that's where I'm at. And those are the numbers I know the best. Uh, and then I'll give you my predictions. We'll, I'll tell you what people are saying about the 2023 real estate market. And then what I wanna do is I wanna give you some, a bonus is I'm gonna teach you how to be a fortune teller. <laughs> um, because uh, you know everybody's always asking the question, what's gonna happen in real estate, right? So I'm gonna show you why markets correct and why home prices either go up or go down. And then finally, at the end, I wanted to introduce you to a new thing I'm trying to come up with. It's called the Homeowner Success Analyzer. And maybe even a, I can ask you some questions at the end because you guys are all the uh, independent investors. So thanks again, Lynn and Celia, for having me. Um, let's just get started into what happened in 2022. Keep in mind, like I said, there's national numbers and local numbers. These are the national numbers or the national feeling of what happened in 2023. We called it the year of the softening and we got hit hard and everything was going really well. January, February, March, everything was going well until we hit April and May when those mortgage rates doubled. Uh, they went up doubled in one year, but really they went up from 3% up to like 7% in a matter of a couple weeks. So we got hit really hard and life was really difficult for these buyers. Everything got expensive immediately, right? And um, also, you know, the double whammy was the inflation. That was a 40 year high. And so, you know, the buyers were getting hit with inflation with low stock market uh, returns, their income increased by only 5%, but inflation rose by 9%. So it was really difficult for them to save money for their down payment, save money to make upgrades to the homes that they were gonna buy. You know, um, also these rents, because of the fact that the landlords now are saying, well, nothing's happening in real estate and mortgage rates are going up and gosh, you know, everything's kind of slowing down and these people need a place to rent. And so maybe we'll up our rents. And so rents are, uh, rentals are very hard to find right now. And the uh, rental rates are going up tremendously, right? So difficult, difficult year. Um, the, we had this slump in home sales. Everything just sort of stopped because the buyers were thinking, I'm not gonna pay 7%, I'm gonna hold back, I'm gonna stop. Also the sellers were thinking, hey, wait a minute, you know, I'm gonna have to get a 7% mortgage after I sell, right? So maybe I'm not gonna put my home on the market. So everything sort of came to a screeching halt because of those interest rates. Um, here's some national numbers. I get all my numbers from this, uh, my lender here. He's in uh, California and in Oregon, Patrick Johnson. He sends me all of these great things. I'm not the most statistic oriented person, but I know them all and he helps me learn all of this. But inflation was our big enemy, still is. Um, and inflation matches or mirrors interest rates. They follow each other, they go hand in hand. So as inflation was rising, the mortgage interest rates were rising. And then you'll see right at the end here, inflation has gone down a little bit and our mortgage rates have gone down as well. So we were at a high of about 7.3% for a home loan, <clears throat> for a 30 year home loan. And now we're down to about 6.5, 6.6 right in there. So as inflation gets better, mortgage rates are gonna get better, right? And you know, inflation means everything costs more. And what happens after inflation? Well, recession happens and recession is people are spending less because everything costs more. But mortgage rates come down after recessions because it's the government trying to kickstart the economy again. And so after every time we've had a recession, 
shortly thereafter, interest rates start to come down. That's our saving grace, and that's what we're looking forward to. And I think that, you know, uh, inflation and recession, they used to go maybe like this, more slow, gradual. And I think nowadays things are just happening quicker. They are getting through things faster. And our hope and prayer is, you know, that uh, we get through this uh, inflation and the recession uh, in a quick manner um, because housing always stays strong after a recession. And you can't listen to the news. It's all sorts of gloom and doom out there. You know, the news wants you to, well, you're not going to tune in for good news. Everybody tunes in for the bad news, right? So. But the good news really is, is that housing comes back after a recession. So don't listen to the news. You hear all these, oh, it's a housing bubble. Oh, my God, what's going to happen? Um, you know, like in uh, 2017, home ownership doesn't build wealth, study finds. And then we get 6.1% uh, appreciation rates. Uh, in 2019, next year, oh, it's going to be hard. Housing market, especially in these big cities. And then we get a 16% appreciation that year. Uh, the housing booms over, uh, you know, all sales are falling after the pandemic, we get 18% appreciation that year. So my word to the wise is don't listen to them, you know, listen to realtors, but you got to be careful. <laughs> then again, talking to a realtor, you got to talk to the right realtor because some realtors are just trying to convince you of something, right? I'm not, that's not my bag. I am stay or go. It's not, I don't care if you stay or if you go, as long as you're making these good decisions. So, um, you know, everybody's saying, oh, we've had this crash. Oh, the, the housing market stopped and the prices went down, you know, dramatically. It's hardly a crash. In the last two years, um, we're up 39% appreciation rates. Yeah, we came down 2.5% when all of this happened, but that's not all that bad. Look, we're up 115% over the last 10 years of owning a home, right? Um, so, um, uh, hardly really a crash. Now, what I want to do is kind of switch over to Santa Clara County. Uh, that was what happened in 2022 nationally. Let's go to Santa Clara County. And for those of you who don't know, this is Silicon Valley, uh, and we have our good areas and we have our bad areas. We have our very expensive areas and our very low, well, our low area. Gosh, the average median sales price of homes in this poor areas 1.3 for the average home so here's what is going on in silicon valley santa clara county um, we got hit a little more than the whole nation right the nation was uh, down two and a half percent we went down eight percent okay and what you're looking at on these charts the dark line is 2022 and we stopped right here at December, and the white bar is 2021. So yes, we're down last year. Last year, our home, our average price in Silicon Valley is 1.4 million. Uh, at the end of December, year over year, our home prices were down $100,000, the average median price. Now we got hit a little hard, uh, really quick. We got 8% just since September. Silicon Valley is pretty volatile there. So yes, uh, we did come down, it hit us hard and hit us fast, but we were uh, inflated, we were hot, we were over revved here in Silicon Valley because a lot of people need to uh, live here, buy homes here. And so we get more drastic ups and downs in Silicon Valley than in most other states. Median sales price, looking back three years, we're still doing great, right? Still doing good since 2019, um, we hit a real high in April, but then we got hit really hard when those mortgage hit uh, rates hit. So we actually went up to 1.6 million from uh, last year of 1.4. So we were doing really well. Mortgage rates hit. We came down, uh, but still optimistically, we've been here before. Really, all we're we're just back to the same price that we were back in February of 2021. So the sky is not falling. Yes, we got hit. Um, here is the numbers for new listings. New listings means homes on the market, currently active homes on the market. The dotted line was 2021. The solid line is 2022. Uh, December, year over year, we were down 30%. Now, keep in mind that every at the end of every year, 
inventory always drops, right? January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So yes, we always usually do come down, but we're down 30% this year. Now, why are we down 30%? Well, why aren't home sellers putting their homes on the market? Could be because they think it's a bad market. Could be because um, they need another mortgage and they don't want to pay a higher mortgage. So maybe they'll just stay in their homes, keep their 3% mortgages, and wait till the market comes back. We don't know why, but listings are down. Uh, actually, also, the sales of the homes that are on the market is down as well. So we're really slowing down here, or we did in December. Now, usually we pick back up, and we're optimistic in thinking that you know things are going to pick up, just not as good as last year. So on closed sales, contracts that have closed escrow, we're down 46% year over year, uh, December to December of last year. The average days on market, how long it takes a home to sell between the time you put the home on the market and the time that you get a contract in hand. That's not closing escrow, that's how long it really took to actually get a buyer. At the beginning of 2022, it probably took about two hours. You had 14 offers. You were $500,000 or a million dollars over the asking price. Um, but now we're really getting hit on these, uh, how long it takes a home to sell, okay? Um, even when there's low inventory, it takes longer to sell. We're up 61%. And what that adds is a lot of instability because when uh, days on market is low, you can predict when you're going to close escrow, when you're going to get your money, when you're going to be able to give that money to the place you're buying, whether it's a new home or a retirement community. And that was all really predictable. And now uh, it could take 60 days to sell your home. It could take 30 days, 45 days, 10 days. We don't know how long. And that instability is really messing with things. Uh, with the predictability of uh, when you're going to get your funds. So days on market up 61%. That's huge. So we're up to about 30 days to uh, between the time you put your home on the market and the time a buyer sends you a contract. Now I'm going to talk about real quickly luxury listings. These are homes that are $3 million and above. Dark line 2022, dotted line 2021 the number of them coming on the market is up by 76 percent now why are home sellers or homeowners of homes that are worth three million dollars or more putting their homes on the market more of them 76 percent more maybe it's because they can't afford uh, maybe their adjustable rate mortgages adjusted up um, maybe they're getting while the getting's good they think it's going to get worse um, don't know maybe they're going to a less expensive area and it's time to cash out but uh, there are more of them on the market. And the bad thing is, is that less of them are selling. The sales of homes that are $3 million and above is down by 26%. So it's a little kind of concerning, you know, uh, in a nutshell, the sales volume was down, the prices were down, buyers couldn't afford to upgrade the homes because they were using their um, stock portfolios and their savings for the down payment and they couldn't afford as much home, right? So they were hesitant because of the instability and they were picky because they didn't want to just buy any old home because six months ago or eight months ago, well, we'll, you know, we'll buy that fixer upper and we'll use our stock portfolio or our savings and we'll put a hundred grand into the house. Well, now they're using that hundred grand for the down payment because they need more of a down payment uh, because they need their mortgage uh, payment every month to be as low as possible, right? They, their buying power didn't go as far. So homes are taking longer to sell. And what I really think needs to happen is sellers, they need to recalibrate their expectations. Hey, we were living it up there for a while. You know, if Zillow said XYZ and my neighbor next door got 500000 over asking, I'm going to price it at $500,000 over asking. I'm going to get while well, the getting is good. Well, appreciation has slowed, right? And it may be flat this year. And so sellers need to realize they can't live in the past. We're a really dynamic, um, fast changing market right now. And we wanna price our homes to sell, not to sit. The longer it sits on the market, 30 days, 45 days, 60 days, the, now the buyers are starting to think, 
what's wrong with that house? What's wrong with that seller? Uh, is the seller motivated? What do the inspections look like? What's the neighborhood like? Why isn't that home selling? And so what happens also, and I'll tell you a story of actually what happened was I was working with a seller. They were moving into a retirement community and uh, the retirement, they told the retirement community, my home's going to sell for $2.2 million. And I thought it was going to sell for $2.2 million as well. And, um, we put it on the market at 2.2 million and they said, we need this amount to get to the retirement community. Well, the mortgage rates hit and everything slowed. And we actually got an offer at 2. Point, I think 1 million. And they said, no way, we're not taking 2.1 million. We need 2.2 million. Well, we had to adjust our price down to 2.1 million, right? If we would have just taken that offer, we would have been golden, but now we're reducing our price. We're following the market down. Now we sit for 2.1 million. We've been on the market for 30 days. What's wrong with that house? What's wrong with the seller? And I say to the seller, hey, what if an offer came in at this rate? And they said, no, we need this rate. Well, sit on the market a little bit longer. We do get an offer here and they reject it again. Now we reduce our price. We could have had two offers had we priced it accordingly in the beginning. So I'm not saying you wanna price it like a barn burner, but I, you don't wanna price it too high. You wanna make sure that you're attracting them and not sitting on the market for too long. Okay, so that was 2022 in a nutshell. And is there light at the end of the tunnel? That's what everybody's asking, right? So there, it could be a good year in 2023, but there is still that fear, uncertainty, and doubt of what is going to happen to interest rates, what's going to happen to inflation. And really, we're just craving, we're praying for stability in the housing market. And you can't get stability when we've got this inflation, which adds instability, right? And same with recession, which is gonna slow spending. And the mortgage rates, like I told you, were tied to inflation and both the buyers and the sellers need those low mortgage rates. So we're praying just for some sort of stability. We just want it to stop rising. If everything could just stay flat or just go down a little bit, that would be a saving grace. Another problem we're running into in 2023 is a lot of the building materials are not available and the people to that, you know, install those building materials, the contractors and the people that are building new homes, right? We need more inventory. Uh, we need less uh, mortgage rates and more inventory. I mean, to get a fence replaced now, the building materials or a roof, a fence used to cost three or 4,000. Now it's like seven to $10,000. A roof used to cost 10,000 now it's 30,000 so we need more housing starts we need more inventory uh, to bring house prices down because the more inventory there is the more supply there is um, then you know the prices are going to start dropping um, and inventory you're going to hear me talk about inventory a lot that's sort of the balancing of the inflation right um, inventory is good for sellers because low inventory which inventory is going to remain low, right? They're not going to do many housing starts and sellers are sort of leery. So there's not going to be as much inventory on the market in 2023. The good part about that for a seller is less inventory means higher prices. So we're not going to get killed on our prices because of the low inventory. It kind of weighs each other out. Okay. So that is our balance there. National prediction in 2023 says we're going to sell fewer homes. Um, in 2021 was a banner year. We had an amazing year where we sold almost 7 million homes in the United States. We got hit in 2022 where we only sold 5.8 million homes. And now National Association of Realtors is predicting in 2023 that we're only going to sell 5.1 million which isn't too bad. We were just going back to 2012. It's still some pretty good, you know, sales volume is still there, right? Um, but we're not out of the woods yet. And I'm trying to be optimistic, right? So flat home appreciation rates are better than declining home appreciation rates. They are going down a little bit, but it's, it's, it's not drastic, right? Um, inflation is starting to come down. Mortgage rates are starting to come down. Uh, the buyer demand is definitely still there. They're interested um, because of these rents that are getting so expensive and they don't want to be a renter anymore. That's a lot of instability, right? Because a lot of homeowners are selling their rentals um, and you don't want to be a renter. 
and there's not that many rentals properties out there so they're sacrificing they're not getting a, a very good rental and those rents are very expensive and what i'm thinking is a lot of these smart buyers are going to start acting now they're going to say to themselves okay maybe six percent isn't all that bad um so they're going to start coming out of the woods and then you're going to see more sellers say oh activity is happening maybe i should get while the getting's good now remember when i told you that sellers need another mortgage to pay in the future when they go to buy their next place optimistically some sellers don't actually need a new mortgage because they may be transferring to a retirement community or they may be relocating out of the area to less expensive areas maybe they're cashing out and buying a home uh, for cash to increase cash flow and make sure they don't outlive their funds um, for the rest of their lives. So some sellers don't need a new mortgage and those sellers may be putting their homes on the market. So, and these sellers, they have to realize, remember I talk about recalibrating and regrouping. We've made huge appreciation over the years, right? I mean, it's a seller's market. We're having a good time. It's low inventory. And then people think to themselves, yeah, but I remember what happened in 2008 and 2009 and it hit, it hits hard and it hits big. I mean, in 2008 and 2009, we had a 20% drop in one year. So a $1 million house, you know, went down by $200,000. A $2 million house went down by $400,000 in one year. We got hit really hard, but Think of glass half full, glass half empty. We made a 70% increase in the last 13 years, right? We've been going up consistently. Um, that's not all that bad. So when someone says, oh, we're down 8% or we're down 10%, you know, come on, that's not that bad. Yeah, no one can time the top of a market. I'm talking to the independent investors group here. No one can price or predict that top market. But if you can stay near the top, you're still in the long run, making a ton of money. Um, you know, this people, sellers are like, well, the market's just gonna last forever. We're going great. We're here in Silicon Valley, 13 years and counting. Let's keep it rolling, right? Well, you know, um, the reason that these prices have been going up for so many years is because we've had low inventory for so many years, right? People are staying put, they're staying in their homes longer. They don't realize what the, the magnitude of the decision is of, should I stay in my home and age in place with in-home care or should I move to a retirement community that really only have two options? But inventory has been steadily going down for years and these prices have been going up because of that, right? So how could this whole equation sort of change? Well, as inventory rises, right, these buyers have more choices. If they have more choices and there's more homes on the market, you know, on your street, there's two other homes for sale on your street, these prices are going to start to come down. We've been on this roll because of low inventory. <clears throat> well, my question is, why does inventory increase? And <laughs> what I've found in the last year is when you go to a party or a get together, no one wants to talk about anything anymore. They don't want to talk about COVID or vaccines, they don't want to talk about president, they don't want to talk about Russia, they don't want to talk about all these things are so taboo nowadays, you don't even know what to talk about, but everybody always wants to talk about real estate. So I'm talking up a storm at these parties, and, and a lot of the time I get the question, you know, why does inventory increase, you know, or, you know, now I'm the life of the party, right? You know, I'm asking people, so, you know, why do you think inventory will increase? And they're like, I don't know. Why, how are we going to know why inventory increases? So what I want to do is help you at your next party because people are going to come to you and they're going to say, oh, I heard you went to this uh, real estate uh, webinar. And they're going to start to ask you, you know, you know, what's the real estate market going to do? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn you into a fortune teller and you can just say to them, Real estate markets change, home prices change because of inventory. Let's check our inventory cards, right? So I surveyed 100 people. The top 16 answers are on the board to the question, name a reason why inventory may increase. In other words, why would sellers sell their homes and put more of these homes on the market? So the first and foremost, the top answer on the board is when it's a seller's market people get up and go and they sell their homes now this one's very obvious right it's the number one answer 
So when it's a seller's market, it's because there's low inventory, homes are selling very quickly, multiple offers, they're going over the asking price, the buyers are like, whatever you want, Mr. Seller, you got it. You can stay in your home as long as you want. We'll give you cash. We'll close quickly. And you know, your home has those challenges. No problem. We'll take care of them. So that's the number one reason that sellers usually sell their homes is to take advantage of this wonderful seller's market. Now, the next answer on the board is a lot of these landlords are starting to sell their rental properties. Okay. So California, and that's where I am here, is a very, very renter friendly state. Um, they have rent control that's been in place since 2019. That's not going to end until 2030. So these landlords cannot raise their rents more than 5% per year. But the cost of living, the cost of having their mortgage, the cost of those expenses and doing those upgrades to those rental properties, you know, is more expensive than what they're making, right? And because of COVID that we just went through, these renters, they didn't even have to pay their rent. And the landlord's hands were tied because they had to sue the tenant just to get their rent back. And so also there was a moratorium that you could not just kick out your tenant, right? So these landlords were like, why am I having this rental property in California? Well, luckily in October 21st, October of 2021, sorry, California ended that eviction moratorium and a lot of landlords were then giving notice to their tenants to get them out, vacate the property, either sell them or reset the uh, rental prices. So um, I think if more landlords are selling their rental properties, then that means more inventory or more homes coming on the market, right? So the next answer on the board for why would sellers sell their homes and more inventory come on the market is Proposition 19. Proposition 19 started in 2021. And in the past, you could take your Prop 13 taxes and transfer your property taxes to another home, right? Um, so that you wouldn't have to pay $12,500 for every million dollars you paid for a new home. So they said, well, you know, you're gonna be downsizing once in your life. If you're over 55, you can take your low property taxes and transfer those to another home. And that would be great. Um, but you could only go to about seven different counties and that next home had to be equal price or less. And what they did when they passed Proposition 19, now you could transfer your property taxes, your property thir Prop 13, property taxes three times you could go anywhere in California not just those seven counties and you could even replace that home with a more expensive home okay so people were moving closer to you know friends and family they were moving better to areas that had better medical care and they didn't uh, you know they would purchase a home that better suited their needs right without paying these new property taxes <clears throat> I can't believe these new buyers are spending $12,500 just for property taxes on a $1 million home. And like I said, the average sales price in Silicon Valley right now is $1.4 million. It's crazy. All right, next answer on the board is a thing called Proposition 69 or Senate Bill, sorry, Senate Bill 9. And what that is, is it's the Affordability Housing Bill or the Duplex Bill. And now I'm not sure if you've heard of this one, but it's pretty scary. Homeowners can now split their lot and these lots are not that big 7,000 square foot lot I can now split my lot into and I could build a home on each property and I could actually build a duplex on each property so that's four families on one lot and I think a lot of these homeowners are going to start saying to themselves I think that's going to affect the value of my neighborhood I think I better sell my home before this starts happening if a home gets sold next door and a builder comes in and buys that property, uh, then they might buy our uh, purchase, I'm sorry, not purchase, build two duplexes on your uh, property next door. So this is a reason why people might be selling their homes. Another reason is low appreciation rates. California last year had the lowest appreciation rate across the nation. The nation enjoyed 12.4% in 2022. California, we had 7.6% interest, I'm sorry, appreciation. So people are moving into states where their home is going to make more money, okay? The next one is, of course, mortgage rates that we're going through. This is a biggie. 
Um, low interest rates allow the buyers to afford your expensive home, okay? Which means they can afford it. That means you can get while the getting's good. And now you can get low interest rates on your next home, right? So this is why a reason why sellers may sell, okay? A uh, reason that they may not is because it might stop things. And I want people to get a little creative here. And I'm telling you that uh, buyers don't realize that, you know, okay, they went from 3% to 6%. Is that so terrible? On a 30-year mortgage of $300,000 at that low 3.3%, you're going to pay $173,000 over the life of the loan. A 30-year mortgage, $300,000 at 6.5%, look how much more interest you're going to pay. But the buyers need to realize, hey, if you got a 15-year, at even at 6.5%, you're saving or you're paying just as much as you would have had you got a 30-year at 3.3%, right? Also, people need to realize, too, if you pay one extra mortgage payment per year, you can cut six years off of your mortgage. If you pay one extra mortgage payment per quarter, you're going to reduce the length of your mortgage and pay less, save more. So even though you're paying a higher interest rate, you're going to be saving money in the long run. If you make your mortgage payment every two weeks, I know that sounds really weird and some of you may already know this. I don't know why the banks do this or why it matters, but you can pay off your mortgage a lot sooner if you pay your mortgage every two weeks. Lots of you know, creative ways to save money and to deal with this higher interest rate, right? Um, you can refinance when those rates come down, which they will. And, you know, think about this too. If your mortgage rates are higher, but the home prices are lower, that's going to balance things out too. So it's all glass half full, glass half empty on these mortgage rates, okay? Another reason why sellers may move is that these high business taxes, it's really expensive to run a company in California it's the most expensive state to run a business. We're losing companies left and right, 18,000 companies between 2008 to 2019. They are going to more tax-friendly states. Our income tax are high, our sales tax are high, and now please don't think I'm anti-California. I live here, I sell homes here. I'm just saying, these are reasons why companies are leaving, employees are leaving, and why more homes may be coming on the market trying to turn you into fortune teller. Remember, if someone says, hey, how's the real estate market doing? You're gonna say inventory and they're gonna say, what do you mean? Now you're gonna have 16 reasons why you think inventory might increase. Also, capital gains taxes are due to go up. So they're currently about between federal and state about when you sell your home and you make a bunch of money, you've got to pay capital gains. And it's right now we figure usually about 30 to 35%. And the current administration is trying to get capital gains taxes to increase up to about 43%. And that may encourage homeowners to sort of, maybe I'll sell because I'm already paying a million dollars in capital gains taxes, even at 30%. They don't want that to go up even more. So they may be doing that. Also, the cost of living and inflation, we're dealing with that right now. Only 25% of the people can afford to buy a home in California, 50% of the people in United States, it's very expensive in California, in Hawaii, in New York. Um, it just costs more to live here in California. So maybe people are gonna go to Oregon or Idaho or who knows where they may be going. Unemployment starting to rise. Um, when people are unemployed, they may start to think about, I need to cash out of my home before I get foreclosed upon. Uh, maybe I'm gonna go to somewhere less expensive. Maybe I'm gonna follow my company. Um, so they may be leaving the area. Consumer confidence is super important, right? If I feel confident, I'm going to do things. If I don't feel confident, my that starts to decline because of my job security, because of these house prices, because of economic news and political news and the stock market and inflation and my wages are going down. When consumer confidence goes down, People may say to themselves, I need to sell my nest egg and go get another nest egg somewhere less expensive. So they may be leaving the area. Consumer confidence was, you know, when we went through COVID, it got hit really hard. We came back, but now it's starting to go down again. I know you guys feel this, you're investors. Um, another reason why people may be leaving California, we're in this mass exodus right now, where 53% of the people interviewed 
are actually considering leaving the Bay Area, and a lot of them are these millennials. That's so expensive to rent here. You know, you have to have two or three families living together in the same area just so you can live in this area and work at home, Home Depot or something. So a lot of the people are saying that this area is sort of headed in the wrong direction. 65% of them are saying that. Um, from 2000 to 2020, California lost 2.6 million residents. Um, in 2020 alone, 650,000 people left the state. So more people are actually leaving than are coming in. So this is a phenomenon. Where are they going? They're actually leaving California. They're going to Idaho and Colorado and Arizona and Texas. I don't know if it's a political ideology thing. I don't know if it's less expensive to live there. I don't know if they're kind of done with this area because of, you know, things that are going on, right? They're telecommuting, right? So you don't have to actually live in Cupertino to work at Apple anymore. So you can leave the area and still work at these Silicon Valley companies, right? Maybe you just come in once or twice a week. 66% um, of the people interviewed said that they would relocate if they could telecommute 100% of the time. And a lot of these people, these companies are actually giving them that leeway. So, hey, maybe get out of California and they want a different way of life. They want larger homes because they're doing homeschooling, they're working out of their homes, um, the homes are less expensive, the larger homes are less expensive in other areas, and they need the four or five bedroom homes, right? Also, they're looking for a different way of life. They're maybe tired of the homeless population, maybe the city isn't keeping up with things, maybe the water quality or the water availability isn't there, maybe they just want something different, right? So uh, lastly on the list, is people are going to retirement communities, right? So they don't have to worry about maintenance. Uh, their family's now coming to visit them because it was maybe awkward to visit them in their home that they needed work and there was too much stuff there. They don't want to cook, they don't want to clean, they want to feel safe. So they're going to these retirement communities. It's 99% of my business is seniors moving to retirement communities. So, so anyway, that is the long list, 16 items of why I think more inventory might come on the market and why inventory may uh, increase. And if it increases, our home prices may start to go down, but activity will begin again. So there's good and bad. There's, you know, glass half full, glass half empty stuff. Okay. So that is it for the 2022 2023 real estate market update, national and Santa Clara County. And hopefully I've helped you have a better conversation at a party. Uh, when someone asks you, what do you think the real estate market's going to do? Really, it's, it's dependent upon inflation, mortgage rates that are tied to inflation, and the inventory and the consumer confidence, right? So, you know what I'd kind of like to do before I end and go on to this next thing? Maybe we could take some questions now, and then I can end it with my coming soon a homeowner success analyzer where I may need a little bit of your help. So Celia, do you think we could, are there any questions or should I just keep going? Um, there are some questions. Um, some of them are pretty specific. Okay. Um, so if you'd like to take them, that'd be great. Um, yeah, I think- What are we doing uh, on time? I think we're doing great. It's 11.15 right now. So we've got another 30 minutes to go. Oh. Yeah, I'll be done in 15. <laughs> okay, great then. So the first one I believe you answered already, um, which is comparing today to 2008. So let me go to the second one. Um, uh, are you seeing the interest from overseas buyers uh, going up, down, or level compared to previous years? Okay. Um, well, when money was cheap, uh, overseas buyers were using loans. Now that money is expensive, you would think that they would start to use cash. But because of all of the uncertainty and the instability in the stock market and world issues, everything has slowed down. Not, uh, not only from local buyers, but from buyers overseas. So um, I would say activity is slow. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know how long it's going to take. We don't know if it's going to be cash or financed. 
so I can't really answer that question. Really, if I had to say yes or no, I'd say um, overseas purchasing has slowed. I, that That's the simple answer, just because of the instability. So hopefully I answered your question. It's really tough right now for us to have a crystal ball. We've never been here before. Every other time things slowed down, it was for a reason, like the banks were all going out of business because they gave out bad loans. Right now, no one knows what the heck's going on. So I'll stop there. Got it. And then um, someone is bringing up the fact of the uh, higher price luxury homes. They see that those seem to have a larger drop than the median um, drop that you sure. mentioned. Yeah. Um, is that something that you're seeing as well? Absolutely. The luxury market, 3 million and above, hey, who... I mean, it's hard enough to buy a regular home for $1.4 million. And, you know, now that the mortgage interest rates are higher, you can't afford 1.4 anymore. Now you can only afford 1.1 because you want to pay $3,000 a month for mortgage. And that's all you're uh, qualified to do. Now the homes, they're trying to look at homes that cost less just to get in. So, um, you know, when you are paying property taxes of $36,000 a year, $36,000 a year for a $3 million home purchase. That's even before your, uh, your insurance kicks in and the mortgage rate kicks in. So those are less desirable homes. No one is, I shouldn't say nobody, this is Silicon Valley. We have all these kids making millions of dollars selling their uh, Apple and Facebook stock. But your typical home buyer right now is not looking to pay $36,000 just for property taxes and looking for these $3 million properties. That's why those get hit so hard so fast. Now everybody's looking for the more affordable homes. Got it. And then we have a couple questions on rentals. Can you comment on cap rates? And are there areas in the USA that's expected to have um, rises in cap rates? Um, I can't talk to cap rates, but what I can tell you is that a, the landlords are selling the rental properties because they don't want to be a landlord in California. B, the home prices or the their investment, their investment property that used to gain 15 to 20 percent a year. In fact, side note, a lot of these Asian or overseas buyers were buying homes and not even renting them out, just buying the home and getting 15 to 20 percent appreciation. Well, now in California, if you're only making 5% appreciation, they could probably get that in other areas, more in other areas, or even in the stock market. And how long has it been since you could say, maybe the stock market's actually a better investment than buying an investment property in California. So um, I think people are selling their rental properties. I think they're moving or buying other rental properties in other states. And uh, I think that's just what's going to start happening. California is not friendly to landlords here. So, but I, sorry, I can't talk to the cap rates, um, but I can talk to you about appreciation rates. Got it, got it. And then um, do you keep data between kind of people who are buying and selling their primary homes versus non-primary uh, homes, uh, particularly whether you've seen um, the whole rental ownership of homes increase or decrease here in Silicon Valley? That is really difficult to find those statistics because when you see a home that's on the market, you don't know if that's a landlord selling a rental property or an owner selling a property that's vacant. Maybe they already left, so it's a vacant property. You can't tell, oh, is that a, uh, a rental property or a primary residence? And they're staging their homes also. So, um, no, we, we don't have those statistics to know. You would have to get with a title company and cross-reference. Uh, is it owner-occupied and then do statistics on those properties? But very difficult to tell whether a home that's on the market is a rental property or a primary residence. Sorry. Got it, got it. And then I think some of the real estate investors have come across um, the DST of Delaware Trust. Um, can you comment on that? No. <laughs> <laughs> Got Sorry. it. No. no. Got it. I, and then, oh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, keep in mind, my forte is helping retirees 
who've been living in their homes for 40, 50 years, try and decide if they're going to be staying in that home or making a transition to a new home, not a new rental, most likely another home that they're going to age in place within home care, either here or out of the area, or moving to a retirement community where you're not buying another home, you're buying what's called a lifetime care contract. So I don't know Got about it. the DST. Got it. Um, and a high level question, what do you think of the effects of climate change, um, you know, in terms of more extreme fires, more extreme flooding, et cetera, uh, over the long term um, on real estate? Well, I'm personally, I keep telling everybody that I think home appreciation home uh, attractability, where people want to start migrating to. Uh, I don't think it has to do with climate change. I think it has to do with the availability of water, political ide ideology, and, um, you know, just things better than in California. So, you know, Oregon, Idaho, Washington, where there's water, uh, uh, red states uh, maybe are a lot of people are migrating to more red states because they're more business friendly and renter friendly um so i don't see anything about climate change california it's probably going to going to cost you more to live here because they are so uh climate change aware that your taxes are going to be going up so that they can pay for all the things they want to do very hard to answer that question climate change as opposed to where people are going I'm not sure I'm the best suited to answer a climate change question. All right. Well, that's all the questions we have right now. Okay. All right. Well, I just wanted to finish up with a, one quick thing. And I thought you people, your independent investors could help me with this. Um, what I've found is that um, my clients, when they're trying to make this decision of whether they should stay in their home, age in place within home care or go to a retirement community, the number one issue is for them not to outlive their funds. Obviously, that's the ultimate goal of you, your investors, and everybody that's interested in retirement or living to 100 years old, right? So usually you go to a financial planner, you give them your income and uh, your uh, income, your expenses, your net worth, uh, what's your portfolio looking like? What's your plan look like? And they do a financial analysis for you, right? But they're only looking at a few things and I think they need to look at more. And I know this firsthand because when you go to a retirement community, there's a sales director there who helps you figure out if you're going to outlive your funds because the retirement community sure doesn't want you to outlive your funds because you've got to pay the bill every month until you're 100 years old right or or longer and so the sales directors at these communities have these spreadsheets and the spreadsheet says how much do you make how much do you spend what's your home going to be worth when you sell it um but they don't actually ask about you know well what about capital gains taxes how much are you actually going to walk away with and i was thinking to myself how could the retirement community not think about that they're going to pay a million dollars in capital gains taxes and when you go to a financial planner he says well with this snapshot everything looks good well what i want to do is i want to create a program it's called going to be called the success analyzer and i want to go deeper right i want to have knobs to turn so that you can see if you're going to make it or not right and so one of the biggest knobs to turn and one of the biggest uncertainties is like I said, you may want to remain in your home, age in place with in-home care. Well, in-home care a few hours a week is one price. In-home care around the clock is, you know, $20,000 a month, right? So you're gonna go through your nest egg, you're gonna burn through that a lot faster. The cost of aging in place has to be in the financial analysis. In addition to that, Another knob we might turn is, hey, here's an option for you. How about if we get a reverse mortgage and increase your cash flow? What would that do to how you're going to outlive your funds? Also, are you going to sell your residence? Let's talk about what you're going to walk away with. Let's also talk about, are you going to sell it and cash out and give that cash to a retirement community? Or 
Do you already have that money? Are you going to rent out your home in this unfriendly state? And you're going to use that for cash flow. Okay, maybe you do. That should be a knob to turn in this elaborate success anal analyzer spreadsheet. Um, are you going to rent a new home? Maybe not even buy anything. Maybe not even go to a retirement community and just live off of those funds. Now, we do have tools. One's called a home matcher that helps homeowners figure out what this new home is going to cost them, right? New property taxes, new insurance if you're moving out of the area local home prices, relocation home prices, which might be less. So we already have that tool. We have another tool called the relocation matcher, which is you tell me what you're looking for in an area, weather, healthcare, demographic, whatever it is, and we'll tell you what cities match what you're looking for. So we have that, then we can put that into the financial analysis. We can also find you a community, whether it's in this area or out of the area, you tell us what you're looking for. And we'll tell you the retirement communities that go along with that, hand in hand with that, different retirement communities, different prices. Those different prices need to be in the success analyzer as well. You can see I'm trying to create something that is much more granular and detailed than a typical financial plan would be. And when I walk into a homeowner's home and they say, we don't know what to do. I'm going to say, okay, let's put some information into the success analyzer. Let's turn some knobs and let me tell you which one works and which one doesn't, right? And then give you a detailed report back, which explains all of your options, both written and in video format, um, of showing you how you will definitely not outlive your funds living to 100 or 110, which ones will work for you and which ones won't. So, I need someone to help me. I've got a place to start. I've got a spreadsheet from a retirement community. I've got a spreadsheet from a financial planner, but I need to add all of this other functionality into that spreadsheet so that I can turn knobs and help other people make good decisions. If you know of somebody or somebody in India or somebody that is really a whiz with financial spreadsheets, I would love to hear from you and maybe uh, help me make this uh, and I can pay somebody to do this. Maybe you're uh, retired and you know all that kind of good stuff. So that's it in a nutshell. I can get your help on that. It would be great. Um, wanted to leave you with one last thing. We could either do some of these webinars with AAII, or you can watch my webinars that I have on my website. And here are the webinars I'm going to have for 2023. The first one and foremost is, should you stay in your home? or age in, an age in place or make a move. And this is, should I stay? Should I go? How do you decide? Okay, that's one webinar. These are all one hour webinars. Um, Lynn, if you're interested in doing any of these, I have these available. Um, I will have them live on my website and we do have recordings. The next one is the myths of retirement living communities. I'm going to feel old. I can't take my dog. What if I don't like the food? What if I change my mind? What if I run out of money? So all of those myths will be covered in the uh, myths of retirement living communities. Also, you need to know what your two decisions are. You only have two decisions. I know everyone thinks I've got tons of options when I retire. I can go live with my kids. I can go somewhere cheaper. I can buy a new home. I can rent a new home. All that is in one bucket of staying isolated in your home aging in place with the cost of in-home care or your other option your only other option is to go to a retirement living community so that webinar shows you what the differences are then usually when we do all of these people are still on the fence and we want to push them one way or another we don't care which way you go as long as you're making good decisions and the breaking the paralysis of analysis sort of pushes you off and we show you the top 10 reasons why you really should make a decision. The last two are um, homework for homeowners. One is the time between they put their name on the waiting list at the retirement community and the time that they move in. That could be six months, it could be two years. But the, the homework is ready, set, go. Everything you need to do before you put your home on the market and then lastly is the flight plan of everything you do after your home is on the market. All the prepping, what happens while you're in flight, 
what happens when you land, what happens with contracts, things like that. So I'm trying to go from the beginning, should I go, all the way to when you are going. And those website, I mean, those webinars are available on the website. So the website is stayorgohomeowner.com. Um, and that's really it for me. If you have any more questions or maybe you're interested in helping me with the success analyzer, we could talk about that now. Otherwise, I'm kind of done. Well, good. Well, Brian, thank you very much for that presentation. You've covered it very, very well. And uh, like I say, I know, I know people that have moved into retirement communities and some are extremely happy and some are a little bit dissatisfied. So those are really good questions you're coming up with and, and having people address. Yeah. And it's something you have to plan for. Yeah. But uh, I appreciate your comments. It's, it's nice to hear about the real estate market from someone who's actually in it and working with it. So yeah, I uh, appreciate it. And I, and I would also reinforce your comments. The, um, the little videos and webinars you have on your website are very useful. Good, and I thanks. Them and I've sent people to them. Great. So uh, anyway, so, so just many thanks for being here. And thanks we'll for having me. Out.